Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to Module 3 of Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technology. In this video, we'll explore problem-based learning scenario B, which looks at the purposes of digital technology. We will begin with the analysis questions and then we'll take a brief look at what digital technologies are, some of the trends, and then we'll finish up with functionality models and the synthesis questions. There are four analysis questions for this video. As always, the questions are posted in the Blackboard site. These questions are designed to help you focus on key areas while you watch the video. I suggest you watch the video twice so you'll be able to easily answer these questions. This video will present you with a context or situation. You will need to identify a problem or several problems that you and your group members will explore over the next few weeks. Once you have identified your problem, begin organizing the knowledge and resources available to you and your group. From this, you'll create a solution and then present this to the class in a few weeks. There are a plethora of devices, applications, platforms, websites, and other technologies used in education today. Most of these were developed for business or consumer markets, but slowly, and some would say inevitably, they have appeared in the education context. Do you know how the following technologies are used in education? There is Coursera, BYOD, which is an acronym for Bring Your Own Device, the Khan Academy, Social Networking, CMSage, or Content Management Systems, MOOCs, which is short for Massive Open Online Courses, Clickers, and finally we have Interactive Whiteboards. You may have used many of these technologies, but some, such as social networking, you've probably used in your personal life and not given much thought to using them in education. We've looked at a few definitions in this course, but we have yet to define digital technologies. In a broad sense, technologies are anything that makes our lives easier. At various points in human history, desks, books, and newspapers made our predecessor lives easier. In education, everything from Socratic teaching methods to textbooks, school buildings to chalk to computers and graphic calculators are all technologies. Only a few are digital technologies. Digital systems, as compared to analog systems, are those that are based on discrete values, such as zeros or ones. This is known as the binary code. In order to convert real-world information into digital formats, a processor is required and combined with memory of some kind so that pre-processed and post-processed information can be stored. This is the basis of central processing units in modern computers, which form the heart of most digital technologies currently in use. Additionally, they usually have some inputs and output systems. Regardless of the type of computer, whether it be mainframe, personal computer, or the newest mobile device, when distilled to the most essential characteristics, computers can only do three things. Transmit, store, and process information. These characteristics are based on standards from the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, the IEEE. This global organization is responsible for establishing standards for all electronic hardware. These transmit, store, and process characteristics define what a computer can do and determine, to some extent, what can be done with computers and other derivative technologies. On the basis of these characteristics, computers and other digital technologies have developed over the past decades. The next few slides will provide a brief overview of the historical development of digital technologies. The developmental history of digital electronic computers can be categorized in three main eras, each with their own particular characteristics. The eras are as follows. The first era is mainframes, which is characterized by rudimentary interfaces, rudimentary networks, standalone programs. These were used by large corporations only. The next era is personal computers. The characteristics of this say that it's progressed from command line interface to current graphical user interface, or GUIs. We have software suites such as WordPerfect Office, Microsoft Office, and OpenOffice. Now, although originally developed to link mainframes, the World Wide Web, and the Internet, 
These evolved and expanded to connect millions of PCs. Also, these computers were for individual use, both in businesses and for personal use. The third era is mobile devices. Concepts of apps arise allowing for the independent development and sale through online stores. Data and information become independent from the apps used to create and format it. Cloud computing emerges leading to the obsolescence of portable media and the separation of enterprise and consumer use of computers. If we look at digital computers from a high level, we can identify several trends. There has been a gradual decrease in size of computers to the point where if you consider a smartphone to be a computer, they have become wearable technology. Operating systems and other software packages were traditionally bound to hardware, but are now available for a wide variety of platforms, including Linux, Android, Windows, Apple, and BlackBerry, and include offerings from commercial and open source organizations. Computer languages have developed from machine language to sophisticated, object-oriented, high-level languages that are increasingly powerful. For example, Hypertext Markup Language 5, known as HTML5, incorporates supports for interactive sessions on web pages without the need for add-ons such as Flash. Sophistication, power variety, and low price have led to higher levels of personal freedom, usage, and competency within the lives of humans. We are also moving away from the need for humans to adapt themselves to computers, to computers being able to adapt to fit lives of humans. Operating systems are becoming increasingly transparent or less obvious, allowing for a more natural interaction with computers. Finally, researchers have explored a variety of computer functionality models. You are now invited to explore each of these models described in the following table. There are four synthesis questions for this video. You should be able to answer these questions before beginning work on this PBL scenario. Please be prepared to discuss your answers in this week's tutorial and in the discussion forum. This video offers a very brief introduction to digital technologies. Go out and explore its history and its trends. I'm sure you'll be surprised by what you find. See you in the next video.